Hi, and welcome to Retroeric. Today, we are going to build ourselves a our Pentium 233 MMX. For this build, I've decided to use uh, this uh, brand new old stock cabinet. It's a AT cabinet and it's uh, from a company called the TCI. That was a local computer shop here in Bergen, Norway. And I used to have a cabinet just like this with a Pentium MMX back in the days. So let's talk about all the components we are going to use in the computer. First of all, we have this motherboard. It's a Socket 7 motherboard. It has uh, AT and ATX connectors for the power supply, but it only has a AT size, so it will only fit in a AT cabinet. But uh, the cabinet I've chosen is an AT cabinet, so this will be fine. We have connectors for IDE, uh, hard drives, floppy drives, parallel port, two serial ports, and we even have a USB port. The Intel 233 MHz MMX processor is already installed. We have a brand new fan and a component to regulate the speed of the fan. I've already tested the motherboard with the CPU and the memory, so I know it's working. It is at least posting, as I've written here. Next, we need a graphics card. This is a Voodoo Rush. I have tested it, barely, so I know it's uh, at least booting up or starting up. But uh, we'll test it uh, more when it's uh, installed. The good thing about the Voodoo Rush is that it's an add-on card on a traditional 2D card. So this is the only graphics adapter we need. Next out is a sound card. This is a Crystal 4236. I have tested it. I have several sound cards that I could have chosen, but I chose this because it has a low noise level and it has a wavetable header where I can connect something exciting. That will be for another video. When we talk about sound card and graphics card, we also need a CD-ROM. I actually decided to opt for a DVD-ROM. It's maybe not um, the correct for this build to choose a DVD, but it has the correct colors and it will work in uh, DOS and Windows, so I've decided to go for this. Here's the cable, the ID cable we'll use on the CD-ROM, and of course for the sound between the CD-ROM and the sound card. Next out is uh, a network card. I've uh, decided to use a PCI network card, because as we can see on the motherboard, it has both PCI and uh, ESA slots. The PCI card here is a Tricom uh, 905CX. And that is a pretty standard uh, network card for that time. And I'm sure we will get it to work both in DOS and Windows 98. I could have uh, decided to use a compact flash adapter like this, but uh, since this install will be running Windows 98, it's not a good idea to use a compact flash because of all the writing to the drive. So instead, I have uh, found this uh, old SSD drive, 128 gigabytes, and that should also fit quite well since the limit uh, for a disk drive in Windows 98 is about 120 the gigabyte, I think, or 30, something like that. But to get it to work, we also need this adapter. So it converts the SATA to uh, PATA, and we can connect it to the IDE 
connector on the motherboard. For the connection to the motherboard, I have uh, found two cables, an ordinary IDE 40 pin cable and this uh, more modern 80 pin cable. I don't think the 80 pin cable will uh, improve the speed, but um, I will just give it a try just to see if there are any speed difference. I don't think so because I believe that the IDE controller on the motherboard is only capable theoretically to give us 16 megabytes per second. But we will uh, test that later. More storage. We have this uh, new old stock 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. So I'm pretty sure it will uh, work. It has never been open. So um, we will uh, be the first to ever try this one. We have a USB controller on the motherboard. So I will try to connect uh, this and uh, see if we get uh, two USB one connectors. Here are two serial ports and one parallel port and also a game port that I will not use because we have a game port on the sound card. Anyway, I will unscrew the brackets from these three ports and connect them directly on the case. So now we know what we will put uh, inside this uh, case. So let's uh, start by opening it up. It's really nice to see a 25 year old uh, case totally clean like this. Nice. If you're wondering why I uh, always have a yellow towel under the computers I'm working on, it's uh, because it makes it so much easier to turn around the computer. It slides easier and I don't make any scratches in the table. Why the color yellow? Well, I think that uh, gives me the correct contrast. It's not too dark, so I can easily find the things that uh, I drop on the towel. And it's not too light either. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. We'll start by removing this um, shelf for the three and a half inch floppy or hard drives, just to make it easier to mount the motherboard. The problem now is that uh, we need to mount some feet on this uh, motherboard. So we need to figure out which screw holes we are going to use. So let's just put it down here. And we can see that we, we will be using this uh, hole here and this one and this one at the top. This one is too far away. So here we will just put uh, something underneath uh, to hold the force, the downward force. And this one does not fit either. So the same here, we'll just put a foot underneath. And we have one in the top. Mm, nothing there either and maybe here no oh there it is there it is a hole okay so we will only be able to screw it to the frame here, 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 and here. And the other places, the other three places here, we will only have feet. These uh, feet are usually 
used in holes like this so we can slide it to place so actually I think we will use these plastic feet here and here and uh, then the height is already decided because we need the same height so we have decided we'll use these uh, white plastic feet and then we need to find a screw that is the same height and I think this one is the same height I only have that in plastic so then we're using the plastic ones so with some uh, fiddling off the camera I have uh, found the right places to put the feet we have a plastic foot here here and here so I've put them on the back plane of the case and I think I can just put the motherboard on top and squeeze down also we have a screw here and here but we don't have any support for the holes furthest back or maybe in the front of the case this one and this one so but i have a solution for that we'll look at that when we have fixed this in place finally it was a struggle uh, fitting this motherboard in the case the problem was uh, here where the keyboard is uh, connected it was uh, very tight here and it looks like uh, this whole metal piece here is flexible and uh, when i was pushing this back like i'm doing now i got the motherboard fitted with all or aligned with all the holes so now i'm uh, quite happy as you can see i've connected a ESA card and a pci card and they fit very well here in the brackets hole so we have um, fixed the motherboard to the case here here and here and here there is uh, not much force going down here but here where we will connect uh, the front panel pins or wires we should have something underneath here so what i'm thinking is that we can use this it's a plastic foot it has uh, the same height and it has double-sided tape underneath so we'll peel this off and see if we can fit that at that corner of the motherboard Here we are with the, that last foot in place. The modern board is now securely fastened to the case. Okay, next up, let us uh, connect these uh, wires going to the front panel. I have uh, connected the CPU fan and turned on the power, and as you can see, it's running. I also connected the wires uh, from the motherboard to the front panel. There was one wire that was hard to connect because it was uh, the wire going to the front panel for the power on light was three pin, but it was only two pin connector on the motherboard. So I used this uh, cable to um, to fix that. Well, as uh, you don't see yet, but let me tilt the camera. As we can see. The motherboard is working. The only error message is the keyboard not present, and that's okay. So um, let us just uh, continue to connect uh, the other cards and uh, hard drive and floppy drive and DVD drive. 
As mentioned, the floppy drive has never been opened, so let's uh, open it together. Looks very nice. No dust, of course. It looks brand new. So let's just uh, slide this into this shelf and uh, screw it all together. So I have uh, connected the floppy drive cable there and the IDE cable for the CD-ROM at IDE number two. And this IDE number one, I will connect here. I will use IDE one for the SSD drive. We can uh, put this cable in the wrong way, but luckily we have uh, something to help us. This side of the cable is red and pin it, pin one is marked with an arrow and it actually also says pin one. So let us just connect this. There we have it. The DVD ROM is uh, very easy to install. Just slide it in. There we are. So before we connect any cables, let's just check that it's uh, configured to be our master drive. And when reading on top here, it says that the pin it's already connected to is master. So um, we'll just leave it there. This is master because it's using IDE port number two and there's nothing else there. This cable can also go the wrong way but not here on the DVD-ROM, we have a, a track. So this cable cannot go in the wrong way. If you can put the cable the wrong way, there's one more thing you can do to make sure it's the correct way. And that is to take the pin one side of the cable and point that to the power connector. And let us not forget the cable going to the sound card so we can send sound directly from the dvd rom to the sound card now the dvd player is installed we're now ready to connect the dvd as mentioned we are using this sata to pata or ide adapter I have ordered a new adapter. Um, that adapter can be connected directly to the motherboard. And instead of having this long and bulky enlarged IDE cable, we will instead have a ordinary and small SATA cable. So that will make uh, the build look a lot more tidy inside the cabinet. But for now, we will use this. I will just lay it on top loosely for now and we can connect it better later. So before we uh, insert the cards, we need to connect the ports we are using. I'll start with this uh, serial port. We need to remove this piece of metal. There, there it's off. Oops, I did a mistake. <laughs> I uh, incidentally connected a third serial. Look at that. We can see that it's a serial port and not a parallel po port because uh, it's a uh, male here. Okay, let's um, go have a look and see if we can uh, find a parallel port. The only parallel port I could find was this and the problem is that the cable is too short so um, even if I connect it uh, down there it's not long enough to use on the bracket or to use directly on the case so I guess I need to get a parallel port for later lucky for us it will not stop us we can still continue building this machine 
So let's uh, connect the top one on uh, com one. And we have a new problem. <laughs> I never thought that uh, I would have trouble uh, connecting COM ports, but uh, as we can see, uh, one of the pinhole is blocked and uh, all the pins are on the motherboard. So that means that these uh, connectors I have here will not fit. So let's uh, take another look. Lucky for us, I uh, found a couple of ports here with the correct connection. So let's uh, take them off and try again. Okay. The new serial ports are connected and uh, we will try this again. The red wire is still number one, so and, uh, on the motherboard we can also see that pin number one is marked. So there we are. Now we have two serial ports, but we are still missing one parallel port but that will not stop us. So one more port to connect before we can uh, do the cards. And that is the USB port. The USB adapter is there and it looks like it only holds uh, one USB port, but actually this connector will give us two USB But I see we have uh, the same problem uh, we had earlier. This um, connector will only fit on the motherboard where one of the pins are missing. Of course we could remove one of the pins, but I really dislike doing that. Let us try something. Let us try to remove uh, the pin that is blocked or the hole there looks like just a plastic piece is shoved in there because if we look from the back side it looks open so let's try that so I found this nail I'll just try to use that to push out whatever's blocking it oh it came that worked much better than I would have expected oh, look at that wow okay only trouble now is uh, which way do we connect it if we connect it the wrong way we will receive plus on the ground and of course send and receive the data pin for send and see will be also switched but do we destroy anything by connecting it the wrong way? Let's see if we can see anything on the motherboard that tells us where the plus or ground is. And no, it's uh, not much there telling us uh, which way it should go. Maybe I'll just uh, fire the computer on and uh, measure where we have plus 5 volt. Okay, this is ground and let's try i believe that this is the plus five no. okay okay i was not expecting to have power there I have no power there. Zero point zero zero seven volt. And let's begin in this end. PC zero point zero zero eight volt. PC zero point zero zero eight volt. PC four point nine nine three volt. PC four point nine nine three volt. 
Okay, and so we have plus 5 volt on this pin and this pin. But uh, that don't correspond with this plug at all. Because I would expect to have plus on the red wires and both of the red wires are besides each other, not in the opposite end. And also they are not at any end. They are one pin from the end. Hmm, let's uh, check the other cable. Okay, maybe we have more luck with this cable. If we look at this cable, no, it's much the same. Uh, we have red at the end and that's uh, a good thing. I think we need to uh, Google that and come back. Google is your friend. I uh, found the USB pin out for this uh, particular motherboard and um, I've seen that uh, pin out layout before. I think it's uh, how it was uh, back when uh, USB 1 was the standard. So um, the one side of the USB connector is mirrored to the other side. So what we learned when we measured, we measured that it had plus one on the far end on the one side and the opposite end on the other side of the USB connector. So what we need to do now to fix that, we can of course find uh, a USB cable that is wired like the one we need, or we can use these DuPont cables and make one ourselves. And that is what we're gonna do now. So as we can see, I have connected four DuPont cables on each of the two USB ports. So now I just need to connect those to the correct pins here. So here we are. They are now connected. I'll put some tape around it just to make sure it's holding. But we will not know if this is working or not before we install a USB driver of some sorts. All kinds of problems can arise when you're building a computer. My problem now, or at least maybe not a problem, but uh, well, I don't like it. Because of the length of the graphics card, the Voodoo Rush card, the only place I can put it is the bottom PCI slot. And that means that my sound card is very close to the Voodoo card. I always like to have a bit distance. One thing is cooling, another thing is, well, the connection in the back, on the brackets. Uh, Anyway, so then I thought, okay, I can move the USB bracket to another hole, like, like this one, for instance. <laughs> but then my next problem is, look at the pins, look at the connection down there. They are higher up than uh, the ISO slot. So that means that I am not able to insert this uh, sound card there. You see the notch closest to the bracket? Well, that will never fit anyway because it will interfere with the USB connector. So that was not a very smart uh, placing of that connector. So we have only one thing we can do. We have to keep using this first Opening for the USB ports and the second for the sound card and the third for the graphics card. It's no other way of doing it. Okay, let's uh, connect it all up. Everything is now connected. We have the motherboard in place. We have connected the cables to the casing, the front panel, the power supply. We have installed a floppy drive, DVD drive. We have a network card, we have a Voodoo Rush, and a Sound Blaster compatible, 
card. We still um, need to fix a few things before we are finished with it. We need to get that uh, parallel port cable and I will replace the PATA or the IDE to SATA adapter I have with uh, one that is uh, connected directly to the motherboard and everything will look a bit nicer. So here we are. Let's uh, turn it on and give it a test. Success, the machine is turning on. But this video is uh, way too long already. So uh, we'll have to uh, stop here and uh, do the installation of uh, Windows 98 and DOS and all the other stuff we need. We'll uh, do that in our next video. I hope you liked the video. I liked immensely to make it. If you liked it, please press like.